into Inca legend. Inti, the sun god, created humans and animals from clay and commanded that they emerge as nations from caves, lakes, and hills across the Andes. From caves in a hill called Tampo Toco, four brothers and four sisters who had found the Inca nation set out to find good land on which to settle. They carried a gold staff that they knew would sink deeply into the most fertile soil where they were to live. Finally, the staff plunged into the soil in the lush Cusco Valley, but they had to fight local tribes to claim their new home. After vanquishing their rivals, the Inca built homes and a great temple of the sun called the Cauti Cancha. The brother and first emperor, Manco Capac, chose Mama Oclo as his wife, thus founding the Inca dynasty and the greatest empire ever seen in the Americas. At the dawn of the 15th century, after centuries of chronic warfare, one kingdom finally emerged victorious among Andean societies competing for preeminence in the highland valley of Cusco. They were known as the Inca, and over the following century, they transformed their modest kingdom into the largest pre-Columbian empire ever seen in the Americas. When the Spanish conquistadors invaded ancient Peru in AD 1532, the Inca had conquered more than 10 million people across formidable Andean landscapes west to the Pacific coast and eastward to the tropical Amazon lowlands. From the sacred center in Cusco, a sanctuary gilded in gold, known as the Cori Concha, or Temple of the Sun, the Inca extended their empire northward along the spine of the Andean Cordillera to the borders of Colombia and southward, deep into present-day Chile and Argentina. Pachacuti was the first emperor and architect of the emerging Inca Empire. His name meant cataclysm in the native Quechua language. Legends and early Spanish chronicles recount his conquests and portray him as the pre-Hispanic equal of Alexander the Great. His followers revered him as a living god, the embodiment of the sun. As a deity on Earth, Pachacuti communed with the ancestral spirits of his ancestors that inhabited the sacred landscape and resided within snow-capped Andean peaks that bore their names. These venerated mountains were the givers of water for agriculture and sustenance. Droughts were not uncommon, so to appease the mountain ancestors, the Inca built shrines throughout the empire for the conduct of rituals. Pachacuti has been credited as the first Inca conqueror, leading the military vanguard from the Cori Concha out of Cusco. The Inca realm was further expanded during later decades by his descendants Topa Inca Yupanqui and Huayna Capac, both military generals and builders of imperial infrastructure on monumental scales. As their armies marched, the Inca emperors ordered the construction of paved royal highways. Large caravans of cargo-bearing llamas followed to provision the troops. The sprawling network of imperial highways with two north-south arteries and countless spurs extending east and west up and down the mountain slopes total an estimated 40,000 kilometers, or 25,000 miles in length. Some sections of roadway had to be hewn through rocky mountain passes and suspension bridges designed to cross treacherous canyons. All of the roads emanated and converged in Cusco, regarded as the center of the Inca cosmos. Throughout the countryside, the Incas ordered the construction of vast terracing and irrigation systems to increase agricultural production and the building of clustered storehouses at selected locations to store produce. Their conquest ideology was one of creating order out of what they perceived as chaos. They considered themselves preordained to impose their state religion and their official language upon the peoples that they conquered. An unusual feature of the Inca imperial strategy was its focus on conquering peoples rather than territories across the Andes. 
Rather than collecting taxes and currency or goods, the Incas extracted regular contributions of labor as tribute from their subjects. Beyond labor in the agricultural fields, workers built and maintained the roads, storehouses, regional administrative centers, and under the watchful eyes of master stonemasons, they contributed hundreds of thousands of hours to the construction of imperial palaces and sanctuaries, such as Machu Picchu and Chacacirao, considered architectural masterpieces of engineering and emblematic expressions of Inca aesthetics. Each of the Inca emperors, in turn, selected places for the construction of their palatial sanctuaries that remained as opulent royal retreats for their descendants. The most famous of these royal sanctuaries is Machu Picchu where the architecture of carefully cut stones fitted without mortar is purposefully ostentatious. Each palace symbolized each emperor's power and command of immense labor forces. Information found in early Spanish chronicles indicate that Pachacuti chose the location of Machu Picchu to maintain sight lines to ancestral snow-capped peaks and the movements of constellations across the night skies. Another extraordinary aspect of Inca kinship and line of royal descent came to the fore at the time of each emperor's death. At these times, the noble status and power of rulership were passed to the chosen successor. However, the properties, people, and rights to labor of those conquered remained with the carefully mummified corpses of the deceased emperor and his noble lineage. Each successor then had to set out to conquer and subjugate peoples in new lands to extract labor and accrue wealth for his own lineage. The mummy of the deceased remained in Cusco and was honored with servants and attendants serving at Chacuti's lineage during the reigns of his successors. A hundred kilometers from Machu Picchu, the ancient sanctuary of Chacacirao stands at an altitude of just over 3,000 meters. Archaeologists propose that Pachacuti initiated construction of the site's temples and palaces, although they suggest his successor, Tupac Yupanqui, expanded and completed the structural complex. Unique among all Inca sites are terrace walls facing west with 24 white inlaid stone mosaic figures of life-sized llamas. The site's builders leveled the top of the longest promontory transforming it into a large platform from which it is possible to observe the entire surrounding landscape. Astronomical calculations have shown that during the summer solstice at Chacacirao, the sun rises exactly behind Yanacocha Glacier, revered by the Inca. Machu Picchu and Chacacirao both offer magnificent views for celebrating spectacular mountain valleys, setting suitable for the emperors as stages for the rituals that connected them to their sacred landscapes.